Hey, it's Corey Vanderplu here at Corey Photo on Instagram. Today I'm going to show you how I deal with skin tones. I use the same technique every time on all of these different photos. So let's just jump right into it. All right, first I'm going to show you on two separate skin tones. And then I'm going to show you the same technique uh, on this very colorful image. So let's just jump right into it. So first things first, I always save my layered files in the same way, just to keep things nice and organized. You see I have my crop at the top, my grain, my tones, my skin, and then any liquefying on a layer I did before. So let's just pop these off, take my grain off, my tones, and the skin. And you can see the three steps that I take. But right now we're just dealing with the tones, so let's jump into that. How I deal with my skin tones is the same every time. The first thing I do is I make a brightness contrast layer and I crank it full. You can see it made a big difference, but I feel like I would like it to go further. So I always take it further. Um, my second layer of contrast usually is cranked out full or somewhere around the 70, 100%. You, you know, it's always contextual, but for this image, I did it full. And then underneath, you'll see our darks are just a little too dark and our lights are just a little too light as it goes with contrast. So what I make sure is I, I'm underneath the brightness contrast layer and I create a new curves layer. I make one for the lower mids, so all the the shadows are brightened. You always go a little bit over because we're gonna be subtly painting this in. And then I invert the layer, which is just command delete. From there, I make another curves layer and I bring down my highlights. So I can just see that where it was a little too bright, I brought that skin tone back. You see it's darker everywhere else, but I just go a little bit further. And now what I do is I invert that one as well. And now I take our B tool, our brush, and on a very low opacity, somewhere around 10, 10 to 12, you just want to paint it in. Paint it in where it just got a little too much. This image is more on the dark side, so you'll see that brightening this image is much more important, especially around the hair. You'll see you lost some in the eyes. And you want to use a big brush with a low opacity. Paint in the eyes here. Nice big brush. And then where it's dark, just make it a little bit brighter. All you want to do is make the photo nice and even. You can already see it's a big difference. A lot more even. Okay, once those are done and you feel like it's very even, you can notice the skin tone's a little bit too vibrant, a little too red. So what we want to do is add a new hue and saturation layer and just bring that saturation down until it is around her normal skin tone. Somewhere around 40 looks good. After that, we're going to add a color balance. You see there's a little bit too much red in her skin and red just isn't the most complimenting. Um, most people are trying to get red out of their skin unless it's in their cheeks. So what we do is bring a little bit of cyan in there and just a little bit of blue. It's not a crazy amount, but it's just enough to bring those skin tones back. And if you know, photography is all in the details. So if you're just bringing, getting rid of that orange and that redness out, that's, that's all you need. You might want to play with it a little bit to the extremes just so you can see the subtlety, but it's really all you need. The last step I like to do is add a curves layer, just to bring everything up. It's usually in the in the mids, right in the in the middle. That way you're bringing the the shadows and the highlights around at the same balance. And from there, I add my grain. The grain always brings the whole image down about a stop when you do that. That's why I like to add an additional curves layer. If you'd like to learn more about my grain, check out this video here or in the description. For now, I'm just going to keep steaming ahead. All right, next. So here you'll see I have the exact same file structure except I have a couple added folders for the background, but let's just take those off and just jump right back into the tones again. So here we go, brightness contrast again. Another full brightness contrast layer, cranked full. And then another brightness contrast layer, again, around the same. You see it's a little bit on the darker side, so just give it a little bit of brightness. Now you see we need to balance it out. It's a very dark image. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new curves layer. 
bring it way up you really want to be able to see all the hair you want the whole image to be able to be seen nothing too dark so around here is great but i always like to go a little over since i'm painting it in subtly again command delete to invert that and then we're going to do the exact same thing just to bring back these tones you can see that the skin tones now on those highlights are perfect apple delete command delete so i always like to start with the darks uh, especially if this is a significantly darker image and you just take a low opacity brush and paint it in nice and simple so just use a smaller brush to paint in those darker spots coming up here you see it's a little dark here in the shadows i don't like it to be that dark so just kind of chip away at it just nice and easy same thing uh, in her eyes just a little bit of a boost just enough so you can see those colors that's great just brush it in nothing nothing overly dramatic just enough so you can see her her eyes and then what you want to do is you want to go to our other curves layer and just paint back where it was a little dark this is a little bit strong again you want to puff it in around seven percent it's got to be subtle if it's not subtle then you'll be able to see lines you want this to be as natural as possible okay from there you want to spend about 10 15 minutes per per layer you'll get better at this maybe five ten minutes but as you see it's nice and balanced all the way around from there we go to our same hue and saturation new hue and saturation layer and you want to just bring this down to the same skin tone as it was before something close this seems a lot better even if you flip it on and off much closer less vibrant and then from there you want to take your color balance again color balance is right below hue and saturation and you want to just take a little bit of the reds out and a little bit of the yellows out nothing crazy I kind of like how it affects the background too. Adds a nice coolness to it. And then from there you add your curves layer. And then you can toss on your grain. Look at this, the skin looks fantastic. All right, last one. This one's a little bit of a more fun one with a, a lot of color, but again, take the grain off. You see our skin layer is still the same. We just clean that up. If you want to know more about skin, check out my other video here or look in the description. And I really break down how easy it is to get perfect skin like this. But again, add our contrast layer. We got 100%. Add our second contrast layer around 63% because it's starting to get a little muddy here. And then I just add my other boost layer to bring the hair back. You see we did some in the nose here as well just to bring back those shadows so it's a little bit more even. And then the darkness, the skin tones held up great here, so I don't really want to darken anything, but what I did is take that same layer and just paint in to darken down, because it looked like it got a little washed out here. So all you want to do is just darken that out. Otherwise, everything looks great here. I don't really want to mess with it. Again, the same hue and saturation trick. Bring it down to make the tones of the skin to look a little bit more even. This was getting very yellow. So again, your saturation is generally going to come down around 25 to 35. This is right in the middle. And then next is the color balance. Here I went a little off the grid because it's a, such a yellow image. What I did was take the same color balance, the same trick, but I cranked the cyan all the way to the left. And I cranked the blue all the way to the right. I inverted the layer by holding Command Delete. And then I painted it in. We're going to do a little heavier brush here, maybe something around 50%. And just paint in the blue. And you see, that blue that is usually getting rid of the reds is really helping out our yellows here. And it makes an amazing tone. And this just balances out the whole image. Just this one tiny little layer balances everything out. Now we're going to add our curves layer just to give it a little boost and kind of even everything out add our grain and then one more curves layer you can see very simple I'm just gonna blast through it quickly one more time here see our tones here all stem 
from brightness contrast. Once you add your brightness contrast layers, you add your curves layers to balance it out in your lower mids and you bring down your highlights. Then you add your hue and saturation to bring your skin back. Add color balance just to get rid of the reds or to balance out the yellows in this instance and then add your curves. It gets really repetitive, but once you get into this rhythm, it becomes very simple. Let me show you this one more time. Brightness contrast layer. Take your curves layers to balance it out. Bring down your hue and saturation. Add the color balance to get rid of some of the reds and boost your curves. Simple. One more time. Bring up the contrast. Really hammer it out of the park. Curves layers to balance the whole image out. Hue and saturation to bring the skin tone right back. Add your color balance to get rid of the reds and then add your curves layers. And there you have it guys. You're ready to export. If you want to learn how to export, check out this video. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. My name is Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Instagram. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Happy shooting.